Our Old Testament reading it comes from Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31, found on page 53 in your pew Bibles. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. The New Testament lesson comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, 14 through chapter 4, verse 5, found on page 1855 of your Pew Bibles. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn the ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from Luke chapter 18. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never and not give up. And he said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time he refused, but finally the judge said to himself, even though I do not fear God or care about men or women, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming." The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him night and day? But he kept putting them off. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. A number of years ago, when my kids were much younger, they were very persistent about a number of things. In some ways, they still are. And for one of those, at least 
back then, they were asking and asking for us to get a dog. Many parents can relate to this. And we had been going back and forth in part because of our living and life situation has not necessarily been conducive for having a dog. And, while, and for a while, they were getting very, very specific about what kind of dog they thought we should get. An Irish hound dog, a Great Dane, <laughs> a Burmese mountain dog, an, an Alaskan Malmute, just to name a few. But there was one that they stood firm on not getting, and they said, Dad, whatever it is, no poodles. <laughs> Sorry, poodle lovers, it just wasn't us. Yes, my kids, and, and kids in general for that matter, can be very persistent. Aaron and Steve were all waiting to see what, how Nash and Bo will give you a run for their money someday. <laughs> To be honest, most of us adults as well were there at one time or another, and it wasn't so many years ago that I know that I was bugging my parents for an Atari game system. Remember those? Or an ATV, a three-wheeler ATV. It is with this kind of persistency that we approach our readings for today. In our Genesis reading, we heard the story about Jacob and his persistency and tenacity in dealing with God, in, in wrestling with God until God gave him a blessing. And in Luke, we hear the story about the widow persistent who is persistent night and day with a judge demanding justice. Both of these stories illustrate something important for us, that through this parable, Jesus tells us to be persistent with God, persistent with God with our prayer. You can imagine this persistent widow with urgency and heartache in her voice, and she would find the judge standing at a busy corner on the street in the city, and she persistently came after him so that she, he would take her side against her accuser. And she leaned on the judge night and day until he finally gave in and agreed to back her up. She was a widow after all one of the outcasts of society in ancient Israel. She was demanding for a just verdict, what was coming for her, coming to her, demanding for her life to be changed, to be different. And so Jesus said, and it is, with, it is so with us in prayer. We are to cry out to God night and day with our petitions. In other words, the widow is persistent and that's the example Jesus uses us to show us how to approach our prayer life, tenacious and persistent. My father was very persistent in prayer. When I was growing up, as many of you have heard this story, my, my, I remember my father praying every morning before he got his day going. He would spend about an hour or so in quiet in the basement praying, purposely lifting up all that was going on in his life, praying for all of his kids, praying for his whole family, praying for his community, praying for people who were hurting, praying that God would bring about love and mercy to the world. He had his whole list written down and kept inside the Bible, and us kids would often go down there and open up the Bible and see if we were on that list. <laughs> My dad didn't expect all of his prayers would be answered the way that he expected or that he wanted, but he did know this, that if he spent enough time in prayer persistently praying that he himself would be changed as well. He thought that this was more important than anything else that he was praying for. Now, not many of us Christians pray like this, do we? I have to admit that it, the same kind of persistency and, and tenacity in prayer, it didn't follow me in my daily life in the same way as it did my dad, but I admire him for it. You and I, we, we may knock on God's door with prayer maybe once or a day or every couple of days if we're lucky whenever it's convenient for us, whereas Jesus taught us to knock long and hard and often 
Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Now, mind you, the purpose of prayer is not to get what we want or not to get God to do what we want God to do. Prayer is not about gaining points, about gaining merit in God's eyes. The purpose of prayer is that we would be properly formed. Prayer is for our own transformation. When we consistently practice it, it can form our souls, our lives towards one of peace, towards an inner, deep in our inner being. Prayer can also lead us to act in ways of love and mercy and advocacy for those that need us most. And God asks us for to be, to be persistent only because God is persistent, because God is tenacious in coming after us time and time again, looking for us to turn to Him, coming after us to make sure that we know that we are loved. This is the promise that God makes to Bo today, that God will not stop loving Bo, and this promise is for the rest of us as well. I know that I need to be reminded of this on a regular basis. Jesus invites you and I to be persistent in our prayers, not because God is unwilling to answer us unless we make a lot of noise or unless we bug God God like crazy, but because this is a part of what it means to be faithful. God so desires a living relationship with us. Being persistent in our prayer, in our relationship with God, can bring about calm in the midst of hardship in our lives. Being persistent in our relationship with God can bring calm in our storms. It can bring clarity in our questioning, even if there aren't any answers. It can bring courage when we are afraid. Being persistent in our relationship with the living and breathing God will lead to a change in the way that we, can see, that we see others and each other, how we live out our lives with each other. Prayer can lead us to love our enemies even deeper. Being persistent in our relationship, God opens our hearts and our lives to be transformed, to be changed, to be healed. Prayer can change us. Prayer is one of those things that we as Christians know we're supposed to do, but almost none of us have ever been taught to pray in a way that can spiritually form us, that can enrich us on a deep level. We haven't been taught how to pray And for thousands of years, people have been praying the Lord's prayers. We all know that one. People have been praying the psalm. Some read read one psalm every day as a prayer. These all have a deep history in forming people over the centuries towards becoming the people of God God created them to be. But this morning, we're going to go, we're going to practice a different prayer. This prayer that was handed out to you, and it's also up on the screen, Christ be with me. And so there are actions to this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up here so that you can all see me, but I'm going to invite you to stand because sometimes the activeness helps us to remember this. And this is part of what we do as a community of faith gathering on Sunday mornings and throughout the week. We gather to practice our spiritual practice, practice our life of faith. And so this prayer goes, God above me, very God of very God. This part is acknowledging that Jesus Christ is God. Christ below me, the hands pointing down. Christ below me, incarnate of the earth. Christ is not beneath us somehow, but Jesus Christ took on flesh and blood, came to earth, came to us to be in solidarity with us. Christ before me, 
when seen. Sometimes we see God being very active in our lives, in the lives of people that we know and love. Christ behind me when unseen. Acknowledging that there are also times that God is at work in places in our lives that we are not aware of. Christ at my right hand, in my strength. God uses our gifts, our strengths. Some of you, this might be your left hand, so then you have to switch that around. (laughs) Christ on my left hand, in my weakness. God is also at work in the things that we're not so good at, in our weaknesses, and in our vulnerability, which is really hard for many of us. Christ is all around us, around me, filling all things everywhere with Himself, filling all things everywhere. And Christ is within me, formed by faith. So let's try that again. Christ above me, very God of very God. Christ below me, incarnate of the earth. Christ before me when seen, Christ behind me when unseen, Christ at my right hand in my strength, Christ on my left hand in my weakness, Christ all around me filling all things everywhere with Himself, Christ within me formed by faith. Amen. And please be seated. So I invite you. Part of this forming faith, of prayer forming us and transforming us, is, is this persistency, is this, is this ongoing, this tenacity of doing prayer. And so I invite you, when, whenever you're walking or even sitting, meditating, sitting, or, or even I know a number of you in the next couple of weeks will be out hunting in the fields and forests or marshes, wherever you go, it can be an active prayer for you if you so choose. It's my hope that this is something that you can use and make it a creative part of your day and and give it some time to work on you because this is not going to be a day or two and it's going to be like, oh, yeah, I mean, you you might feel something, you might sense something after the first couple of days, but this ongoing day after day after day, I encourage you to try this for a number of weeks. People of God, when we devote ourselves to the prayers, whether they are the Psalms, the Lord's Prayer, or other great prayers of the church, such as this adaptation of St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Prayer, when we devote ourselves to it, this holy language of prayer begins to shape us, begins to form us. The prayers come, become a part of who we are and can transform us. And the good news that we hang on to through all of it is that we can be certain of this, is that the God of the universe who is tenacious at coming after us, persistent in loving us, not giving up on us, this is the God who also listens to us and hears us and wants to be, uh, us to be transformed more and more each day into being who, into the people of who God created us to be. That is beloved children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.